that's the beauty of the Estonian startup is I think it never expires. Now. Hi, this is my interview with Kashif, who was successfully endorsed for the startup visa for Estonia. This interview talks about his experience applying with a mobile analytics app and his business idea. Um, this is a snippet from the full course on how to apply for the Estonian startup visa. Uh, the link is just below. Uh, you can get their example uh, documents, uh, example business plans to give you a better idea of what's expected and to help you apply successfully for the Estonian startup visa. So how did you learn about the Estonian program? So Estonia, Lithuania, all of these, uh, these were like brothers and sisters to me. So in fact, if you ask in, in Pakistan, they cannot recognize between Estonia and Lithuania not at all. So, so uh, I mean, um, I heard uh, from, from, the, from the knowledge perspective, I heard, uh, I knew Estonia from the beginning because we, all the technology guys know that actually Skype originated in Estonia. So we, and I also had a client from Estonia back in 2013, 2014, he was working on a small uh, product of his own. So we had really, we had really good relationship with him. So I knew about Estonia myself, but I didn't know about the Estonian startup visa uh, until I, I started searching around for the, for the path. So, so because, uh, so, and of course I had never been to Estonia as well, but I knew that it was, you know, some somewhere along the, along the Finland. So I was uh, so I was uh, and I was not really window shopping at the time, but I was just trying to make sure that uh, my application is approved from as many countries as possible. And if there are any deficiencies which are being which are to me, so I'll be I'll be covering them in the next application. So that was the plan. So that's why I applied with um, with Estonian agencies. So for Estonia, you have to fill all the questions uh, in the, at that website to complete an application, which includes your, and you can, you can uh, it needs your business plan. It does not need any formal interview. It, uh, you have to upload your pitch deck as well. You have to upload your business presentations. You have to upload your financials. You have to upload any snapshots or the evidences of something that is being, that is actually being, you know, it's available. So for your, for your startup, and then you have to wait. So it took me about uh, more than a month, around one and a half months to get the tool uh, for the startup, uh, startup visa for Estonia. But then it, it, was, it was very straightforward. So you just apply on the startup computer, you tell them all the details about the team members, about the business plan, about the, about the financial plan, about the structure of the company, so on and so forth. So then, and then you do it. So, and you just wait for it. That's, that's how it is. So is there an interview process as part of that? There is no interview process for uh, like startup Estonia. So I I'd actually move on to the Western side where this is, where the education and the English speaking world is like, I can find more people, you know, more progressive people and more progressive processes. And uh, I can find a better uh, infrastructure over there. So were you successful with that application? Yes, I was, I was successful, but again, uh, so for Estonia, I had to fly to Egypt to get the visa. I was, I mean, yeah, I was excited to get the approval, but I was not excited to fly to Egypt at all. So, so, so that's, that's why I, and uh, in the meanwhile, so there was, there was some, there was a bit of a time difference between the, um, the startup computer approval and the, the Estonian agency approval. So I, I was having a contingency at the back end, also at the same time. So, and luckily the, the startup, pro and it, the application is still valid. So the approval is still valid after two years. So the approval actually stays, stays valid. So that's, that's it. That's, that's the beauty of the Estonian startup visa. I think it never expires. I, I, while working in the software companies in Pakistan, you come to realize that there's no real way for people uh, here for, the, for young teams, for small teams here to look for the projects and you know expand themselves. So there are there are some there are some teams and there are some companies which have their um, uh, you can say which have their founders or owners or partners you know sitting sitting abroad in UK or in US or in Australia. So they they're like uh, so they are getting the projects from that 
from their side. So they have one, uh, one leg over there. And then they have the offshore team setting up, set it up in, in Lahore, in Karachi, in Islamabad here. But for the small teams, it's not possible. So uh, the other way for the, so other model, business model for the software teams to survive is to make their own product. So, but of course then you have to have investment for that product, then you have to have the skills for, uh, you know, for uh, making that product and then make, make you know, just uh, putting it in, into the market. So you have to have money and you have to have resources plus the expertise for that. And unfortunately we don't have that also. Also, uh, most of the teams don't have that. So there are, these are small groups of, of people who are like, you know, they are uh, they're young lads, they're collaborating together, they have different skills. So someone would be good in PHP, someone would be good in Python, someone would be good in JavaScript. So uh, in front end, and there would be one business guy or then, then there would be one jack of all trades like me. So they would, <laughs> so at that point they would, they would actually start and they would start getting small, uh, you know, uh, low bid projects and low ticket items. They would start working on those. So uh, then uh, at that point, back in 2013 and 2014, uh, the mobile application development was really, it was at, at the height. So it started off in 2007, 2008 with the launch of Android and with the, as, as the Android and the, and the iOS took, uh, took place. So it, it happened at the same time. And uh, the mobile gaming industry was really, you know, it was really uh, booming at the time as well. It's still booming, but of course there's more competition right now, but still it's, it's expected to grow uh, very rapidly till, till about 2025 or maybe even further. So um, at that point I realized that, okay, so I, I would want to set up a company. I would actually start with a mobile gaming company. So I would start with that. So uh, I hired a couple of resources. Uh, one of them was an ASO guy, uh, app, uh, app Store Optimization, as we call it. So that ASO, the job of the ASO guys, uh, guy was to actually, you know, after the launch, just make sure that the app is, you know, it ranks well in the Google Play, uh, Play Store, or in the app, iOS App Store, and it ranks well and gets more downloads and it makes more money. And uh, the other team, of course, was the, the regular development team. So we were making apps, and uh, that, but then they were not being ranked. So it was it was a problem for a small team that we were having. So we were not either we were not having enough skills, or we were like not spending enough money on the on the marketing of those apps. So that was a real problem for us knocking at the door because I was spending money on the uh, on the team, but on I was not getting enough ROI. So my problem started immediately once we launched about two or three apps, mobile, uh, the games in the Android store. At that point, uh, we had uh, an analytics tool which was called um, uh, App Any. So App Any is de facto standard right now. So it's the it's this tool that people actually refer to for their app store analysis for Google Play and the, the uh, iOS App Store. But there were, there were no competitors at the time. There were small, there were people who had their own processes. Uh, they were guys, there were teams who had their own processes for analyzing the app stores. Then they had to have, you know, um, they had to have like, um, they, they had to compare the data from the, from the multiple tools. Uh, and, and those were primarily their own build, um, the custom built ones. So I decided that, okay, fine. So if I know the processes, if I know the problem, and if I know the solution, I know if it's a repetitive process, which is happening in the back end, it can be automated. So I started working on the, on the same lines, on the same tool that I, I started working on a tool of my own, which would actually help me and my team to get the list of the, uh, the keywords, which people were searching on the Google Play. And it would um, it would help uh, teams like me. And my my uh, my vision was to actually build that for myself and for the for other smaller teams who could not afford App Any because App Any probably lies about like it's about six or seven figures now. So it's uh, it costs you about six to seven figures uh, probably in a year. And if we could spend six to seven years on just on analysis of the App Store, 
then we could actually launch, we could, we could collaborate with Catchup or maybe any other publishing uh, company and we could launch better apps. So the bottom line is that we don't have enough budget to afford app any or such other tools. So my goal was to uh, build that tool for myself. And once I, I, I approach that level where I'm confident uh, that this tool is, uh, you know, it's giving me the right data, then I will just open that up to, for, the, for the public. I hope you found that interview helpful. As I say, this is a snippet from my full course on how to apply for a Estonian startup visa, where you can get example documents, example business plans to give you a better idea of exactly what's expected and how successful applicants have secured their endorsements and have secured the visa. This is a pathway to uh, permanent residence as well as giving you uh, excellent access to the Estonian a business community and a foothold in Europe. Um, it is also a pathway uh, to citizenship if that's also important to you. So just to see the uh, full course, just click on the link in the description below. Thanks, bye for now.